Okay, let's switch gears. Last month we introduced a new segment entitled Ask the Doc. We asked residents to chime in with common medical questions and we've got a pretty good one this month. Take a listen. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I, gotta... I have a question for the doc. Is it true what they say? An apple a day keeps the doctor away? That's what my grandmom always said. Doctor, doctor. Actually, your grandmother was correct. An apple a day does keep the doctor away. In fact, we do recommend probably more than one apple, perhaps five, six apples, or some form of fruits and vegetables is beneficial for your heart and the rest of your health. Uh, we also recommend some other things as well. Low fat, no starchy products, whole grain products, lean meat, two fishes per week. Now, more of this information can be available on the website of the American Heart Association. Now, here are some other heart healthy tips you might consider. You should be exercising every day for 30 minutes. That's recommended. You should also be doing some weight training, but light weight training. Don't go too hard on that. And what are you really doing to reduce the stress in your life? Are you listening to music? Are you talking to your friends? Are you going for a nice walk with your dog? These are all things that are important to your life. They also help your health as well because it lowers your blood pressure, it lowers your heart rate, you're more satisfied with yourself. That all promotes good health. Most importantly, you should know your body. I can't tell you how many patients come to see me in the office and they know how many miles of the gallon their car gets, what kind of fuel they're putting in. But do you know your health? Do you know your cholesterol? Do you know your blood sugar? Do you know your last blood pressure? If you don't, you should. So go ahead, take a bite out of that apple, but please see your family doctor. doctor, doctor give me the news, I gotta... Thanks to Dr. Krasner from Kennedy Hospital for that information. I think there was a little something for all of us to learn in that segment. Okay, let's switch gears again. Next up, we've got a new segment in store for you. We'll be running it once in a while on Ask the Mayor program. We're gonna call it Cut Me a Break. In this segment, I'd like to share with you some of the outrageous news items I come across from time to time. I'll weigh in with my opinion, and if you like, pop me an email with your thought on the subject. Now, this is a good one. I recently read an article in the Washington Times entitled, Soldiers Pay Bag Fee on Travel to War. The subtitle reads, VFW Seeks Airline Waiver, Not Reimbursement Form. Since a relative of mine recently shipped off to Iraq, that headline caught my eye. Here's the gist of the report. Newly assigned active duty military personnel who are shipping out overseas are granted a free baggage allowance for the first two bags they check. At American Airlines and many other commercial carriers, these same young military volunteers must pay an additional $100 to $300 per bag for each additional bag they check. A spokesperson for American said, it gives the military a break on the cost for excess luggage and the soldiers who incur the fees are reimbursed. Reimbursed? Cut me a break. As if a young man or woman shipping off to war to defend our freedoms is going to have time to file paperwork and wait to be reimbursed by the federal government. They shouldn't have to file it in the first place. And the VFW concurs. They think that, quote, service members destined for Iraq should not have to spend the money out of pocket and should not have to worry about filing expense forms in a war zone, end quote. I gotta agree. I mean, think about it. The irony of the situation is that this war originally began when airplanes were hijacked and used as weapons against the American public. Now those same Americans who are volunteering their service to this country are being hijacked by the airlines. Cut me a break. Come on, Washington Township. If you're as outraged about this as I am, I urge you to contact the Air Transport Association of America in Washington, D.C. and let them hear your thoughts. Here's the address airlines.org. Again, airlines.org.